We have been traveling the rich lands of East Africa, far and wide, across the highlands and lowlands of this beautiful region, talking to farmers wherever we go. We have given them the help and knowledge they need to improve their farming methods, increase their income, and turn their farms into good business for the future. Join us and our experts on this journey across East Africa and share the family's experiences as they make these changes. Karibu to the Shamba Shepap Safari. Hello and welcome to Shamba Shepap. We are in Tiva, in Kitui County. And we are here to meet a hardworking farmer who is a shepherd. Well, let's go meet her. <laughs> hello! Hello, Lydia. How are you? I'm sorry. Show us the farm. Today we are visiting Lydia, a hard-working farmer who keeps cows, goats and donkeys. She waters her animals using water harvested from this pan. And feeds them with a bit of sorghum and the fodder available on her farm. Lydia also has a few chickens that live in her dark kitchen. So Lydia, how are you? I'm fine. Yes, we are very happy to be here. Even are me? Yeah, 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 I am. <laughs> <laughs> now tell me, uh, how, how, how big is your farm? My farm is five acres. And how many kids do you have? I have six kids, four girls and two boys. Tell us about your farm. What do you have in your farm? I have planted maize, beans, sorghum, pigeon peas. So yeah. Lydia, as you said, you know, the climate is changing. Mm. Sometimes you expect rain, sometimes you don't. How prepared are you as a farmer for these changes of, of climate? I have prepared, I have dug water pans where the rain, I have it them. Oh, you have a sweater? Mm. Yes quite prepared. Yes. Tell me something about your cows. I have two cows. They are not good. Why? Why? What do you mean they are not good? Mm, they are not beautiful? The pastures are not good. Yeah. So they are not eating well? They are not eating well. Lydia, how are your chickens? You have seen them there. Uh -huh. But the place to sleep, they don't have. Where do they sleep? At my jiko, where I, see, where I do cook food. And may I ask, where do they lay the eggs? Where I keep maize. <laughs> we call it Ota. On, the, on, the, on yeah. the roof. So they lay eggs there? They, they lay eggs there. Do they occasionally drop? They drop. Really? They drop, yes. So you end up having <laughs> eggs? Yes. Sometimes they are just entering in the food. Uh -huh. I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tell me about sorghum. Sorghum, as I planted at the first time, it was good. But the rain, when it came during harvesting, it is swept, all the sorghum. Do you grow now any sorghum or you stopped completely? No, I won't stop because won't it, stop. it has demand. Like yeah, I won't stop. I'll, I'll continue. <laughs> okay. Yes. And now we are here and we didn't come alone. Naomi, who did we come yeah, along we've with? We've come with experts Yes. help you more. Yes. You know, learn about your shamba and actually become more. I'm kind of very farmer. happy. Help us all together. Okay, thank you, thank yes. you. I'll be very happy. To a use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two for me. Just, just two. Just, just, two. Two, just two. Now, <laughs> this is a lovely farm, isn't it? Yes, it is. Lots of work to be done. Yeah. So what do you want to start with? Well, I want to check out on the, on the sorghum. She has huge problems. We want to see what the problem is. Then later, I could go to the cows. What about you? I want to start with the chickens. Then I need to look inside our kitchen and right. see what I can do. There's some chickens in our kitchen. We want to get out of the chicken. What am I saying, Naomi? Mm -hmm. Chicken for the kitchen doesn't matter. I get it. Yeah, uh, her kitchen is very dark. Mm -hmm. And I'll see how I can do about that. Okay, and we can do the water pan together. Water, we're doing it together. Right. We've got what to do. No more donuts. Remember, no more donuts. Right. No more donuts. Lydia has six Canberra chickens. 
which is crossing with our 15 local chickens and a few good roosters. But her flock has no house of its own. They live with her in her kitchen and they eat all her food. Wow. I introduced Lydia to a Kenchik expert to see what could be done to shape up her flock. Now Alvin, we've walked around with you and you saw where her chickens live and sleep. What do you think? Uh, it's wrong, Why? completely. Uh, I'll start with the chicken themselves. Uh, it's wrong because uh, that place is, where it's poorly aerated. It has a lot of smoke. In terms of biosecurity, it is not the right way. Lydia needs a new clean chicken house with good ventilation and enough space. At least one square foot per chicken. A good house will keep chicks safe from predators. Now, Alvin, which kind of chickens do you recommend for Lydia to keep? We are in Kitui, in semi-arid area. We advise our farmers here to keep the Kendro breed because they are very good quality. They can survive in semi-arid areas because they are more hardy. They have high immunity. Yes. How many chicks are you bringing for Lydia? Uh, for Lydia, we have said it will give 100 chicks. 100 Kendro oh. chicks? Yes. How does that sound, Lydia? I'm very happy. <laughs> okay. So we assume the house is complete and we brought in the chicks. What's the first thing we do? The first thing we do, we make sure that the brooder is ready with the wood shavings. We have enough drinkers, enough, dr enough feeders. You'll need one feeder and one drinker for every 50 chicks. Fresh, clean food and water should be given daily. For the first three weeks, a brooder jiko should be placed in the middle of the house to keep the chicks warm. One jiko is enough for 300 chicks. When we release our chick in the brooder, the one that feels cold can go to the jiko, the one that is feeling hungry will feed, and the one which is thirsty will go and take water. Yes. Let's talk briefly about hygiene. How important is hygiene to chicks? It's important to make sure you observe biosecurity. Anybody is sensitive to infections. It's always good to have a foot bath at the entrance. Make sure your feeders are clean daily to make sure that there is no entry of pathogens into the, in the poultry house. Good hygiene is extremely important. You will need a foot bath at the entrance filled with the disinfectant to dip your shoes in. You must clean the house with a disinfectant every few days to keep diseases out. We promised to bring Lydia 100 Kenbro chicks. So, Karis and our team must get to work on a new chicken house for Lydia. Meanwhile, I wanted to make sure Lydia knew how and what to feed her new chicks when they arrived. So, I introduced her to an expert from Onga. Mr. Munari, Lydia is going to get 100 Kenbro chicks. Yes. The construction of the house has started. Yes. And now, talk to us about quality feed versus the production of the chickens. The most important thing to give good quality feeds then you are guaranteed high productivity. So Mr. Munari, start Lydia up with a feeding regime of 100 Cambridge chicks. We are going to start from a feed we call the chick and duckling mash from Unga Farm Care. Lydia will use them on her chicks for a period of eight weeks. That is two months. And by the end of the period of two months, each chick should have consumed approximately two kilos of the feed. Then after the eight weeks, she will move to a feed we call Fugo Growers Mash. She will feed for the next 10 weeks. Then from there, the chicks will have started laying. We move to the layer's complete meal from Unga Farm Care. Each layer will eat four handfuls of layer complete meal each day. You can supplement this with local feed from the shamba. If you do this, give them two handfuls of local feed and two handfuls of layer complete meal every day. And of course, let her not forget clean water. Clean water to the birds is very, very key. So she has to provide the water that you can drink, not the, the waste waters that they normally use, maybe washing clothes here and there. No, it's the fresh, clean drinking water. That's what the chicken will require. Mr. Munari, could you just briefly tell Lydia what, what kind of feed she can get from her own farm that she can give to the, the chicken? Uh, looking at Lydia's farm, 
One of the feeds she can get from her own farm is she has things like kales, that is sukuma wiki. Yeah, they can be used to supplement. If there are cabbages and the normal grass, yeah, all these, when they are given to the chicks, they can easily supplement the nutrition requirement. While Tony was busy with the chickens, I wanted to find out more about Lydia's sorghum patch and find out what went wrong the last season. Lydia only managed to have us one bag of sorghum. I introduced her to Jacob from East African Breweries to learn more. So Jacob, why should farmers around this area plant sorghum? Because one is drought tolerant. Second, EABL has a ready market. It's going to buy all the white sorghum that is grown in this region. Aha. Uh -huh. yes. So uh, Lydia, yeah. is this the first time you're planting sorghum yes. or have you been planting before? This is my first time to grow sorghum. So this is your first harvest? Yeah. In fact, there were many challenges which we faced. Uh, there were many birds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the second thing, the rain came and the wind. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. when you harvested? Yeah, I harvested the few. It is important to know when to harvest your sorghum to get a good quality crop. The farmer should harvest when the crop is uh, relatively dry. She should cut the heads mm -hmm. and uh, put them in a safe place. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you think what happened to Lydia's sorghum is because it rained, yes. she harvested late? Yes, yes, yes. Let's go see where Lydia is storing her sorghum harvest. So, Jacob, what do you think? Well, the structure is good, but she should have placed the sorghum heads on a tarpaulin, yeah. so we should not be having desks and uh, cement in the structure. Before sorghum has fully matured, it will go through a milky stage. If you squeeze the grain and it produces a milky-looking liquid, it is not ready. When the sorghum has passed the milky stage and the grain has hardened, cut the heads, dry them on a tap, and store them in a safe place. She harvested when it was raining, and she did not dry it properly. So you'll find that some of the sorghum heads, they are moldy. So what happens when they mold? The quality has deteriorated. It's bad, and nobody will buy. Ah, Karis, there yes. you are. Yeah. Everything all set? Yes. The chicken house is coming up very well. You've got everything you need. You've got the nails, you've got the wood, you've got the timber, you've got the sawdust. You've got everything you need. Karis, Karis, I need you. What do you need? No, 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 I need you. It's a secret. Karis. I'm not happy with this, Karis. No, Karis. Please, there's a lot of work to be done on this house. Karis. No, 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 no. Listen, there's a lot of work to be done. The chicken house we'll is not important. We'll settle this dispute right after the break. Karis, Karis. Karis. Karis! Welcome back to Shemba Shape Up. Now we have a deal. <laughs> We've decided to share Karis and also do some joint projects together. So let's get on with it. I couldn't stop thinking about Lydia's dark kitchen, where the chickens had been living. I have the perfect solution for her. Lydia, what are you preparing? I'm preparing papa. Uh -huh. Yes. A moment earlier, I walked around your kitchen and I saw it's, it's quite dark. Yes. And that's it's during quite, the day. Yeah. How is it at night? Oh, it is very dark. How do you manage to cook? I just I use koroboy. It has smoke. Mm, a lot of smoke. Does it affect your eyes? Yeah, it affects my eyes, even my nose. Your eyes start tearing. Yeah, yeah for tearing no for no reason at all. You become all. emotional. Yeah. And you start crying yeah. and cooking. Yeah. So how does the food taste at all? Oh, it is very, it tastes very bad. <laughs> it tastes bad. <laughs> yeah, you because of smoke. It. You I cannot see, see what I'm cooking. And you told me there are chickens inside. The chickens are there. When I cook, they just pick food. Uh, yeah. They pick the food and they, they fall inside. They fall inside. The soil is there. You eat feathers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've got a solution oh, to the problem. Yes. I've got a lamp here. Yeah. It's called a D light. A D light. D light. Yeah. Right? Mm. This lamp mm. uses solar power. Solar? There's no more kerosene. Thank you, thank right? you. Yeah. So you use this panel mm. to attach it to the 
There. A lamp here. Yes. And it starts charging. Yes. You keep it in the sun, maybe the whole day. The whole day. Yeah, it, right. is it is charged. I'm very much happy. Maybe even you can be able to. Thank you. To use it. Now it's got four levels of light. Mm. This is the first level, second level. Yes. Mm. Third level. Yeah. And the brightest. And the brightest. So I will see everywhere, yes. even the chicken, yeah, the food. The so Lydia, once your lamp is fully charged, yes. you can also use it to charge your phone. My phone? Yes. Yes. So we have this gadget here. Yes. Which you attach to your lamp. There. Right there. Yes. And as you can see, there are many. There are different varieties of chargers. Mm -hmm. Suitable to your phone. Five of them. Five of them. Oh, I'm, I'm very sure your much phone up. cannot miss one. It can't. Good. So that's your lamp. Yes. Now you'll be able to use it inside there. Inside? Mm -hmm. At night? Yes. And I'll come to check because come. I want to see how the, whether the food is going to taste different. You are welcome. No. You are welcome. All right. So, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. Mm -hmm. Enjoy your lamp. Yeah. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. In dry areas, farmers need to harvest as much rainwater as possible. Lydia took us to see where she harvests water for her animals and crops. So Lydia, do you use this water pump? Yes, I use it. Really, it's, it doesn't look good. It is dirty, but I don't have any other ones. Yeah, you yes. can see there's a dead frog there, rats, rats. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> How do you use it? I do use it to water my plants, to water my animals. Okay, I can see there are some holes in the in the paper. What we're going to do, we try to remove some of these weeds. Yes. And then we are going to plant some fodder trees. Mm. Which one do you have in the farm? Only one. What do you call it? Leukemia. Leukemia? Mm. Leukemia. <laughs> Leukemia, you have Leukemia. And clean, you don't try to clean it, so you don't have to keep it. Yes, clean it, please. <laughs> for me. Yeah, for you. Yeah. We'll do it for you. Yeah. There was a lot of work to be done. So we set to work with Garis to clean up Lydia's water pan. I left the men to clean up Lydia's water pan while I went to have a look at her livestock. Lydia has five goats, one cow in calf and one lactating cow that hasn't come on heat in nearly a year. I knew she could be doing better, so I introduced her to an expert from Coopers who could tell her how to improve. It's been one year since her cow came on heat. As the expert from Coopers, what Lydia might have done wrong. Cow coming on heat depends on many things. Mainly is feeding. You need to give your cow good quality feeds at the right quantities. Lydia, yeah. which milk do you feed your animals? Do you give your animals minerals? Not really. It is important to give your animals supplements. In Coopers, we have a range of supplements for your animals and you guarantee your quality. The heifer is supposed to give an Maclic Plus. Maclic Plus will enable your heifer, that's in calf, for the pregnancy to grow very well and the heifer to calf safely and calf healthy calf. For the in calf heifer, she should give 150 grams or two handfuls of Maclic Plus per day. And for this other cow that's lactating, you need to give it Maclic Super. Maclic Super has enough minerals that will enable your cow to produce a lot of milk as well as come on heat and be served within three months after calving. For a lactating cow, you should give 20 grams or one tablespoon of Maclic Super each day. Our expert identified a big problem. Lydia's cows have ticks and worms. Lydia, how do you spray your animals? Me, I use only a, a, a piece of cotton, then I rub it like that. How frequent? Sometimes I stayed for two weeks. Yes, maybe that's the problem. Ticks spread dangerous diseases in animals. The most deadly tick-borne disease in cows is Iscos fever. You need to be spraying your cows every week using Grenade. Grenade is a product from Coopers that's able to control ticks, flies, lice, and fleas.
After we sprayed Lydia's animals, we had a look at the cow shed. Uh, so Nelson, you you looked at the feed, yeah, and the cow shed. What was your opinion of that? You are feeding your cows mestovers, and you're putting the mestovers on the floor, where there is cow dung, and the feed's getting dirty. The animal won't be able to eat the feed the right quantity because of the smell from the cow dung. The structure doesn't have feeding trough. Lydia, yeah. how do you feed your animals without feeding trough? No. Just put it on the ground. On the ground, as you have seen. No, you need to construct a feeding trough and watering trough. Feeding trough will save you a lot of money because if you put feed on the ground, there's a lot of wastages. But if you put the feed on the feeding trough, we will preserve feeds. They won't get spoiled and animal will eat the feeds very well and able to meet its energy requirement and protein requirements as it's supposed to be. So Caris got to work to improve Lydia's cow shed. Lydia's water was filthy. Her plastic lining had holes. The size of the pan could use some trees to protect them from collapsing and to stop mud from washing into the pan. A good trough should have three parts, one for minerals, one for dry feed, and one for fodder. Remember to give them plenty of water. Make sure to keep it clean. If you chop stovers into small pieces, there'll be less wastage and the animal can digest them better. Elvin from Kenchik brought Lydia 100 Kenbro chicks. We prepared the brooder with feeders and drinkers. For 100 chicks, Elvin adds a packet of 5 grams of vitamin to 5 liters of water. Kenchik supplies a vitamin packet for every box of chicks. the first three weeks, baby chicks should be fed on demand. They'll eat as much as they need. Lydia? Yes, Tony. <laughs> How is cooking at night nowadays? Nowadays I do just cook properly. I, there is no tears. You're not crying? Yeah, I'm not crying. Even I can see where the, where the chickens are. So now you're happy? I'm very chicken. much happy. In fact, you have shaped me. Oh, we are very happy too to have been in Tiva. Yeah. Yes, I have learned yes. more about sorghum. Even I will be a role model to the other farmers. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Now you know when to deworm your cows? Yes, I know when to deworm my cows, even to give them the good food which they need. Now the future will be very great. I promise you, when you come back here, I will be a good farmer. And when do you want us back? Give me only two months. Two months? Yeah, there will be changes. Yeah, because I have learned a lot. You are a great farmer. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tony. It's time to say goodbye to Lydia. It's been another great show here on Shamba, Shamba Shape, Shape Up. Shamba Shape Up is online. To learn more about today's topics or to watch any of our previous episodes, visit shambashapeup.com. Select the episode and click play. You could also visit our Facebook page, Shamba Shape Up. 
to get more information, get involved in discussions, and also get a chance to enter some of our great competition to win great prizes. You can also find us on Twitter at Shamba Shepa.